Have you ever wondered what goes on in the mind of a psychopath? Psychopathy, a complex and controversial subject, is often shrouded in misconception and stigma. The term psychopath conjures up images of eerie serial killers or menacing villains, but psychopathy is far more nuanced than pop culture would have us believe. It's a personality disorder characterized by enduring antisocial behavior, diminished empathy and remorse, and bold, disinhibited and egotistical traits. But remember, not all psychopaths are violent criminals. Some can lead seemingly normal lives hiding in plain sight. The prevalence of psychopathy in the general population is estimated to be about 1%, yet it's considerably higher in certain settings like prisons. Much of the stigma around psychopathy stems from a lack of understanding. It's not a choice, nor is it an indicator of evil. Rather, it's a complex interplay of genetic and environmental factors. Psychopathy is not as simple as black and white, it's a spectrum of traits and behaviours. What makes a psychopath? Are they born or made? This question has puzzled psychologists and criminologists for decades. Let's delve into the key traits that define a psychopath. Firstly, a defining characteristic of a psychopath is a lack of empathy. This isn't just about not feeling sorry for someone. It's an absolute inability to understand or share the feelings of others. Picture a person who can look at a suffering individual and feel absolutely nothing. It's not that they choose not to empathize, they simply can't. Secondly, psychopaths are notorious for their manipulative nature. They are masters of deceit and can easily twist situations to their advantage. They can lie without flinching, cheat without remorse, and exploit others without a second thought. It's all a game to them and they are always playing to win. Perhaps the most disarming trait of a psychopath, however, is their superficial charm. They radiate charisma and confidence that can easily draw people in. They are often articulate and tell captivating stories, making it easy for them to gain trust and admiration. But this charm is nothing more than a facade, a skillfully crafted mask designed to hide their true nature. Imagine someone who embodies all these traits. Someone like Ted Bundy, one of the most notorious serial killers in history. Bundy was known for his charisma and good looks, which he used to lure his victims. He manipulated people with his charm, all while lacking any shred of empathy for the lives he was destroying. He was a textbook psychopath. But it's important to remember that not all psychopaths are like Bundy. Psychopathy exists on a spectrum, and not all psychopaths are violent or criminal. Some may be high-functioning individuals, blending seamlessly into society, their psychopathic traits hidden beneath a veneer of normality. As we can see, psychopaths can be charming and manipulative, making their true nature difficult to identify. But by understanding these traits, we can better recognize and navigate the complex and often chilling world of psychopathy. How do psychopaths operate within our society? This may surprise you, but psychopaths are not always the menacing figures portrayed in popular culture. They walk among us, often unnoticed, sometimes even admired. They can be charming, charismatic, and highly successful traits that allow them to blend seamlessly into the social fabric. Take, for instance, the successful businessman. He's admired for his assertiveness, his ability to make tough decisions without batting an eye, his knack for risk-taking. On the surface, he's the epitome of success. But delve deeper, and you might find traits that echo the chilling profile of a psychopath. A lack of empathy, the ability to manipulate others without remorse. A superficial charm that hides a deeper callousness. Psychopathy, it seems, is not always a barrier to success in our society. In fact, some aspects of this personality disorder can be advantageous in certain roles. Psychopaths can be highly adaptive able to wear the mask of normality while navigating social and professional landscapes. They can be compelling leaders, their charisma drawing people in. But this charisma is often a facade, a tool used to manipulate and control. It's a dangerous game of smoke and mirrors, with the psychopath always holding the upper hand. They can be masters of deception, their true nature hidden behind a veneer of charm and success. And while they might not always cause physical harm, the emotional and psychological damage they can inflict can be just as devastating. Psychopaths have a unique ability to dissociate themselves from the emotional consequences of their actions. 
This lack of remorse combined with their manipulative tendencies can make them particularly dangerous. Yet because they often occupy positions of power and influence, their actions can go unchecked, their destructive behavior normalized. Psychopaths can blend into society, often occupying positions of power and influence. It's a chilling thought, isn't it? But understanding how they operate is the first step in recognizing and addressing the potential harm they can cause. What happens in the brain of a psychopath, you might ask? Well, let's delve into the neuroscience behind this enigmatic condition. Psychopathy is often associated with irregularities in the brain's structure and function. Key areas such as the amygdala, which is responsible for fear and empathy, and the prefrontal cortex, which governs decision-making and social behavior, are thought to function differently in psychopaths. Research suggests that the amygdala of a psychopath may be less active, leading to their lack of empathy and fear. Moreover, a less active prefrontal cortex could result in impulsivity and poor judgment. However, it's important to note that these findings are not definitive. Scientists are still piecing together the intricate puzzle of the psychopath's brain, and it's a journey filled with more questions than answers. The mind of a psychopath is a complex and fascinating subject of study. It's a testament to the remarkable intricacies of human psychology and the mysteries that we're yet to unravel. Can we treat or manage psychopathy? The question is as complex as the disorder itself. Current research suggests that while a cure for psychopathy may be elusive, management strategies can help mitigate its most damaging impacts. The cornerstone of managing psychopathy lies in early identification. It's crucial to spot the signs as soon as they manifest, typically in adolescence. This early intervention can provide a window of opportunity for behavioral therapy, which could potentially redirect the individual onto a more constructive path. Treatment options are limited and often met with skepticism due to the psychopath's knack for manipulation. However, certain therapeutic approaches, such as cognitive behavioral therapy and contingency management, have shown some promise. These methods aim to encourage empathy and accountability fostering a healthier interaction with society. Remember, the goal isn't to change the psychopath, but to manage the behavior, reducing the harm they might cause to themselves and others. Understanding psychopathy is key to managing it effectively.